Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Flow Over Fear podcast, where it is our mission to help you to rise above fear and realize your ultimate potential in leadership and life. I'm your host, Adam Hill, and it is my goal to share with you the human side of high performance. My guests share their experience with fear, anxiety, struggle, challenge, and most importantly, despite all of it, how they rose above it to achieve incredible results. So if you're ready to rise up, let's get started. Hello, everyone, and welcome to this recap episode of Flow Over Fear. And today I'm going to recap my interview that I just had with Jay Twining. And Jay Twining is the is the host of the Feel Good Fatherhood podcast. And he's also a brand strategist uh, for Brand Builders Group, a group that I am part of. He actually helped me to originally launch this podcast as far as uh, showing me the ins and outs of, of some of the details here. So he is quite experienced and uh, expert at, uh, at helping people with their brands and to build their brands. And that was one of the things we started to talk about in this, but it, but it was an all-encompassing, very, very far-reaching and broad-reaching interview. And, um, and we talked a little bit about the importance of brands as it relates to fatherhood. Because, you know, who we are and what we represent in the world is often, you know, a representation of, of some of the things that we're afraid of. You know, for, for one, one of the things that Jay shared was that, that out of the things we think we might be most afraid of, like fear of sharks, fear of getting burned alive, fear of public speaking, he asked which one of those did we think was probably the worst fear. Of course, I answered fear of sharks, having been a swimmer previously in the open, in the water and me knowing that very, very well. Uh, and he said, no, the number one fear for people is public speaking. And that is something that, uh, uh, obviously reflects a lot of the internal struggles that people have with things like imposter syndrome or fear of being enough or of like wondering if they actually even deserve to be there. This is one of those things that we run into a lot with people is this belief of, am I enough? This fear of feeling like, like we're imposters in this thing that we're doing because we're, we're paving the way for people or we're, or we're, we're carving a path or we're in uncharted waters. And when we're un, in uncharted waters, we feel like we have a sense of inadequacy because we might not necessarily know the exact right solution and we have to decide on it. That, of course, is what leads to imposter syndrome. And this is this particular part of the brand strategy part that, that Jay was talking about is very relatable to our fears as parents and how those show up. And in particular, our fears as fathers. And this is not to marginalize any individual uh, uh, people out there, um, mothers or, or co-parents or any other kind of, 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 uh, of par parental figure. Uh, but in particular, you know, Jay's expertise falls in the realm of fatherhood. And in talking about fathers, um, you know, there are a lot of fears that that kind of come up in in that world. And um, you know, what there were when I asked Jay what kind of fears really do come up uh, uh, within fatherhood, he'd mentioned that there are three primary fears that really start to come up a lot of times that 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 uh, he shared. And the first is, is the fear of actually not being the father. And Jay admitted that he had this fear as well, but, and it might sound irrational to somebody who might not have experienced it. And, um, and, you know, I think one of the things that Jay acknowledged was that it's not a rational fear. A lot of times, I mean, if it is a rational fear, then there's certainly an issue there um, that needs to be dis discussed between the, the, the partners. But as far as, you know, like, you know, monogamous relationships and, and where things are planned out, there shouldn't be a concern there, but that is a fear that may pop up within fathers is this fear of like, I, of, of not really being the father. And while it's irrational, it is certainly a fear that comes up. And, and, you know, one of the things that, that I think we need to recognize as fathers at that point is that regardless of that being an, a, a rational fear or not, whether or not we're a father is how we show up when that time arrives. And that might be the nature of the fear is, are we enough? It comes back to that brand building 
uh, statement that, that we talked about earlier, are we enough? And as fathers, we think that, and that may come out in different forms or in different fears. And maybe we're, we're afraid to even admit that, that we're not enough, but it does come up. The second fear that fathers have is this feeling of imposter syndrome, which we talk about a lot, which is quite cliche at this point in our, in, in our uh, common uh, language, but it's true in this scenario too, is are we fit to be in this role as a father? And that's really the provider syndrome. Are we fit? Are we, are we feeling like we're going to be able to provide for, um, for this child that's in our life? And the third fear is that I'm go am I going to hurt it? And I can certainly relate to this, remembering my, uh, uh, my kids when they were first born, you know, I was, I was afraid to go to sleep because I was just afraid that if I went to sleep, somehow the, the baby might miraculously wake up, get out of the bed and start a wondrous journey down the street. And, uh, um, and all sorts of hijinks would ensue. Um, but that was the terror that was going through my mind. It was irrational, of course, but it was a fear is that, you know, am I somehow going to hurt the child? Um, either by, you know, but by, by something that I don't intend to do. Um, and that those are, those are fears that we have as fathers and those are normal. But one of the things that, one of the ways that Jay told us that we could really start to start to rise above those fears, because we never really get over our fears, but when we can rise above them, we, we can acknowledge them and see them for what they are and name them. Because when we shine a light on the thing that is causing the fear, that fear thing itself starts to dim. It starts to lose its, you know, it starts to, it starts to get smaller. And that was, uh, uh, that was one of the things that he shared in, in terms of any kind of fear in which we're, we're talking about. As long as we keep shining the light on it and making it smaller, we can start to rise above it. In general, talking about fear, we had a deep uh, uh, conversation early in the in in our interview about just the general fears that we have, and um, and we got into the sense this idea of of fear versus fear that might be helpful and fear that might be danger, and this is something I've talked about in the past where you know we have to discern between what fear is telling us. It could be telling us yes that there's danger out there that 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 maybe that there is a shark in these waters and we should be legitimately afraid of that. But it oftentimes it might be telling us that, you know, this is a signal that you're pushing against your comfort zone and maybe you just want to push a little harder. What is the difference? Because a lot of times those two things feel the same. A lot of times those feel, um, feel the same, but what, what, uh, uh, you know, what, what Jay said about that is that danger is really in our heart. You know, we feel it in our heart. Um, when fear is just in our heads and that's why we really have to get around what's in our heads and get to the root of what's in our heart, because ultimately we might find that what's in our head, that, that, that there isn't, that there may be a danger that we're not avoiding because of the fear in our head, but we need to rise above the fears that are on our head. We need to transcend that in order to, uh, to become more than, than we are and, 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 uh, and get over that fear. And when we, when we start to rise up above the fear, we don't really get over it. But, but one thing that Jay had mentioned was that we actually, we just start to shorten the time it takes to lean into that fear. He'd use this analogy that he's afraid of, of, of water because of a couple of drowning incidents that he nearly had when he was younger. And, um, in order to master that fear to get, to get beyond it or to rise above it, you know, he had to stand at the shore, stand at the, the, the side, the edge of the pool and, and work through those fears. But every time that he worked through them, the ultimately the time frame that it took for him to work through them and get into the pool or get into the ocean became shorter. And I can certainly relate to this, to my experience with open water swimming and my fear of open water swimming. Like when I was, when I was training for triathlon, I was afraid of the open water, afraid of swimming in uh, the open water because not so much because of the sharks, though that was certainly a fear, uh, 
more so just because of the open space and being able to get back to shore or being swept out to sea or all of these irrational fears. And what, what really happened was that the more that I immersed myself in that, the fear didn't go away, but it dimmed, it diminished. I, and that was, that was me really rising above it was getting more courage over it. And the frequency at which I was doing that made that time frame shorter to when I could actually get beyond those fears. Um, but the longer the time period, the longer the frequency uh, between those events, those, those times when I got in the water, the more afraid I became again. Like right now, I would have to work through that fear again because it's still there. It still exists. We never really get over fears, but we can rise above them. We can do that by immersion. And we evolved the conversation from parenthood into, into Jay's life as a gamer, as a, as a, as a game creator. Um, you know, he worked early on and he, he met a, a mentor in the gaming world that, that gave him the confidence to go and start working in the production of video games, which he told, said was a very, very good time in his life. I mean, it was the dream job of, of many kids out there and many adults. Let's face that. The thing about that is though, that at certain times in life, no matter how great those experiences are, they all do come with some level of toxicity and some level of challenge. And the person that Jay was at the time, you know, he was bringing a little bit of, of that toxicity to that world, but he was also experiencing a lot of toxicity in that world. And he, even though he said that he wouldn't never, he, he would never, he don't, he doesn't regret working in that industry. He does say that he, um, he, he had to, he had to acknowledge at one point when he came home and he picked up his daughter and he, say, he sang her a lullaby and then put her right back to bed, that he wasn't present as a father. And that was something that was very important to him. And, and so the thing that we took from that is a, it's never, never worth it to stay in a toxic environment. Um, and so that was one reason that pushed him away from, from, uh, or pushed him out of that, that industry. The other thing was though, that if, if your life choices are costing you and you're afraid, you need to look at that as something that, that you're leaning into that, that you need to, to make a change in your life. If your life choices are costing you in the case of like, you're living an unfilled life, fulfilled life, because you're in a toxic situation, you're a situation you don't want to believe in. Your choices are costing you at that point. And then second to that is that if you are afraid to go in this different direction, you have to look at that and, and ask yourself, is that fear challenging me? Is it challenging me to move in a different direction? Is it challenging me to push beyond my comfort zone? Now, obviously you want to be careful with that, but you want to, you want to certainly acknowledge that as a first step. And so that's one of the things we could look at as far as how we show up as fathers, as mothers, as parents, is how authentic are we being to ourselves? Because if we're being inauthentic to ourselves and, and inauthentic in our careers, in our relationships, in our, in our lives, then maybe we're not being present as parents at all. But if we show up first in our authentic, in our authentic uh, being and our authentic, the authentic person that we are, then we're able to be present as fathers, as mothers, as parents. Now, Jay's father died when he was, um, well, he, he died, but he, did, he didn't really have a relationship with his father growing up and chose never to really um, seek him out, though when he tried to seek him out, he couldn't find him, but, um, but acknowledged that it wasn't really important for him to find him. Um, and it got to the point of like, which, which, of which uh, looking at situations like that, when there's poor relationships with between the father and the child or the mother and the child or, or, or a dysfunctional relationship within the family, one of two things can happen. You know, the child can start to adopt the same characteristics as the parent and the cycle can continue. Or the child can recognize that that's not what they want to become. 
and change and, and really desire to be something better or something more for their kids. And I've seen that trajectory in many of the interviews that I've had with regard to um, how some of these folks have grown up and the relationships that they've grown up in and uh, or lack thereof. And, and, they've, and they've had a desire to be something different, to be something better. And it's worth digging into how that dynamic is, what moves a person into one direction uh, in terms of, of the direction of continuing the cycle or continuing the victim mentality or doing whatever that may be, or going in the direction of, of changing, of transcending that person and becoming something better. Because Jay became, uh, through, um, through finding clarity in what he didn't want, he started to make the decision once he got into college and, his, and he took more ownership of who he was, he decided to lean into uh, leaning into a person that he did want to become and looking at the people that he, the person that he did want to become. And that's ultimately what Denim, led him down this path of, of wanting to help people in their personal brand in discovering their brand identity and ultimately helping fathers to become more present, more authentic and more uh, impactful fathers. And so if you'd like to check out his YouTube show, it's the Feel Good Fatherhood podcast, and he's at Feel Good Fatherhood. You can also find uh, Jay Twining on LinkedIn and, uh, and look him up there, connect with him there. Uh, make sure to go uh, follow him on or subscribe to his channel on YouTube, comment, uh, like his shows and listen to it. There's some great nuggets, especially if you're, become, if you're gonna be a new father or if you're a father already. Um, or if you're uh, a parent and just want to learn more, um, and uh, and check out the interview that we had, I had with him. It was it was a great interview. We went in a lot of different directions, but a lot of gold nuggets in there. So give it a listen. Thank you for joining me today. And I'll catch you next time. Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in to the Flow Over Fear podcast. If you'd like to learn more about getting into flow and learn the foundations of flow, I have a free video series on my website at www.adamcliffordhill.com called The Foundations of Flow. Feel free to go there and download it and start your journey to rising above fear and achieving greater flow in your life. And if you like this episode, and I'm guessing you did if you stuck around for this long, then please do me a favor and hit the subscribe button and you will receive notifications when I have new interviews, new recaps, and new trainings that pop up on YouTube. Thanks again for joining us.